welcome back to Instagram Christianity. I'm your host, Ray Johnson, and here I'm with the lovely Caroline Lyle, who also happens to be my wonderful grandmother. <laughs> and since she grew up in a far different time than us, as far as things she's had to deal with in the world, you know, way before social media and crazy things we deal with today, I wanted to get her perspective on Christianity as a woman from a different time and her observations as she's grown up to a vastly different world that we're all experiencing today. So with all that said, since you originally wanted to be a bookkeeper or accountant for Casual Corner in Tennessee, but then the employer decided <laughs> you were far too gorgeous and placed you as a swimsuit model. It's such a hot topic these days with posting certain pictures on Instagram and the like, so my question for you is within the church or amongst other co-workers who modeled as well, did you find it difficult as a Christian woman to not feel judged because you were modeling swimsuits? Um, not actually difficult. I mean, at first it was very unusual <laughs> to do a job like that. But it was fun. People were nice. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> There's so much more controversy with things like that these days where women are judged for posting bikini pictures and then they're like, oh, are you really a Christian or not? Because you're showing so much skin, you know. So I'm glad, despite the times that are far different, that it wasn't a hindrance or something you had to really fight. So I'm happy for you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, of course. Also... With things that you did in that time period, like the promotion for politics with the We Like Ike and the whole parade thing, what is something as promoting politics and Christianity did you find that was interesting in those days? Well, in those days, it wasn't as uh, open so to speak, as it is in these days, hmm. and you really didn't give that much of yourself. You simply told the story of who the person was and what their abilities were or were supposed to be. Yeah, I feel like people are far too, nowadays, apt to share their opinion before even speaking, so... The fact that with your generation, you guys didn't care that much at all. I mean, of course, you had differing opinions, but at least for my assumption, there is a lot more respect for differing opinions overall than today, for sure. I would say that's true. <laughs> um, kind of fast-forwarding through your life, uh, you know... My mom and my uncles are older, and so is Grandpa, <laughs> and you're still just as stunning. <laughs> um, when it came to raising three kids and being married to a diabetic from unfortunate circumstances uh, as to how he obtained that, health concern. Were there moments in your life as a Christian where you just felt there were so many factors beyond your control and you're thinking, why is he giving me all these things to worry about? <laughs> oh, sure. Every day. You, you think, what can I do when there's very little you can do? You have very little control especially over someone else. So 
I never really felt that I was that big a help. Mm. Well, I'm sure my mom and uncles would say otherwise, because you've done a great job raising them. <laughs> we like to hope so when we're old and thinking back. We like to think we did our best and tried our best. That's the way life goes. <laughs> you don't get to do over. Yeah, that's true. As much as we aspire as much and... When people are asked about a superpower, that's probably one of the number one things is to time travel. <laughs> True. Uh, I agree with that. <laughs> so, because, you know, as far as I know, like Mom, she was the only girl in her family, and I believe you were as well. Yes. So, it was different for mom because when she was growing up, things were just starting to change where there's a lot more of an uprising for independence for women with you know, jobs and things like that as far as it seeming more normalized and not necessity if it had to be. Uh, for you, growing up, what was something that you faced that no one else in your family, with the exception of your mom, Evelyn, that you found to be different if you were a guy in your time? Well, back, back when I was growing up, um, the woman or the sister didn't take the lead. It was always the guy, and normally the guy was older, the firstborn, so to speak, of the family. So it was always quite different. You sort of were in the background. Mm. And occasionally I was able to step out because I worked and did things to bring me into other people's lives. That is the most wholesome answer with how you ended that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is a very good point because, you know, 40s and 50s, it was so much advertised in a non-discriminatory way as far as normalization of women cook and clean and take care of the family and that's the primary role unless financially she has to go out to work but it wasn't a requirement necessarily and not to say it is today a requirement but more so far more encouraged to be a working woman and at home if you wanted to so that's really interesting yep. Right, yes. Well, women nowadays prepare themselves better, I think. As far as schooling, they get the best education they can find for what they want to continue with their lives. And they study it, think about it, and talk to others about it, trying to make the best of the world that they can. Yeah, that's really well said, honestly. And I don't know what reminded me of this from your answer, but there's actually been a funny short-form video trend on things like TikTok, Instagram, the like, where women in my particular generation were kind of in between Gen Z and millennials, were the in-betweeners, if you will, and us in this college age, it's so funny. Some will post parodies of how stressed out they are, and then they jokingly say, why can't we go back to when we didn't have to go to college? <laughs> it's really funny how times are changing where 
because the market is so competitive and no matter your skin color as a woman, there's still going to be the, oh, well, a man's doing the same exact job. Such as things that men are normally known for, like engineering. And it's so much more competitive for women, and they still get disrespected as, oh, this is man's work. And to some extent, things like being a janitor and plumbing and that kind of stuff, we typically wouldn't want to do because it's not as appealing and not like it would be for them unless they grew up with their dad doing it and so forth. But, you know, there are certain jobs where we don't mind guys doing, but if we want to as well, it seems that we have to fight that much harder for respect and unless they're not quite as skilled in general, they don't face that same issue. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that because you grew up in such a different era where that was probably a lot more prominent. Let's say you wanted to get into uh, something to the equivalent of teaching but far more male dominant how do you think that would have played out? Well, you would have had to first gather yourself the facts and see what you were actually trying to do to better the world and the life of those around you. So you had to study and read and listen to all different opinions. You couldn't just strike out and go, okay, this is what I think and it should work, you had to be able to back it up with um, information that you had gathered. That's really well said, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I knew interviewing you would be great because you have such wisdom and insight, and not just because you're my grandma or you're older than me, but... I can tell, like me, you really analyze things in a way that when you discuss it, it's conveyed in a manner that's easy to understand and makes sense. So I'm oh, really happy you agreed to do this with me. Sure. Not a problem. And I have one last question for you. Okay. Since the workforce was vastly different, when I was in high school and you were working part-time at Macy's as the dubbed packing queen in the dock area for inventory. What is something you noticed about the work environment that was so much different? And if you have any stories about the complete switch in the workforce that you experienced? I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, when I work or worked, depending on the job, I knew when I went in to ask for the job, I had to give them reasons that made sense why I wanted to be there and why I thought I could do a good job. So you first had to think about everything involved, not just, oh, I'm going to go work here, or I'm going to go work there, and it'll all work out. You, you had to know what they expected of you, mm -hmm. and you had to be capable of that. You couldn't just say, I'm going to do it. You had to have a little bit of background from reading or studying whatever your means might have been. So that's the way I always looked at life, I guess. I had to know what I was going after and do the best I could do preparing myself for that particular job or interview, whatever. <laughs> Does that a... answer your question? Oh, for sure. That's a really good point. There's lots of controversy in the workforce today because you briefly brought up experience. Or not briefly, but mentioned it for sure. Yeah. 
and I've talked with you about this before, and I sent you the podcast where my friend Lauren, Nikki, and I discussed job hunting, where on resumes and applications for a job, they ask for five years experience, yet senior, senior and junior year of high school and all of college doesn't go towards that. So then you kind of wonder why you're taking out all these loans just for that to be an exemption for a job when you're trying to have an entry position and you're supposed to learn on the job anyhow whether you have plethora of experience or not in that field. So the fact that you've had all the adventurous jobs with modeling and anything in between and then you worked at Macy's and you're around lots of clothes and jewelry so you kind of stayed in the fashion area of life in a way um right I just it's just so interesting how experience back when you were growing up as far as applying for a job is vastly different because we're so overwhelmed with niche and individualized jobs versus in your era. I would, if you didn't mind, like some closing thoughts of advice you may have for people in your generation with women who are viewing a world that's so different than what they were used to as a kid and so on. What would you well, th- advise for that? I think everyone, including your your age group, everyone has to stay aware of what's going on. Everyone has to use the means we have, which are many. Mm-hmm. We have all kinds of good ways to find out things and to back it up, make sure it's true before we start talking about it. And I think that's a huge advantage to the kids of your age that have grown up and see all of these different things on TV. And you wonder yourself, do you trust what they're saying? How do you research all of this? And it's good to have means to research. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the best thing we can have is our ability to research into all these different subjects and different people. Oh, I love that. So basically to summarize what you said, you're a high advocate, if you will, for the phrase knowledge is power. Exactly. (laughs) Well, I always love talking to you and I feel more so after this how much I admire you and it was so fun to get your insight thank you appreciate you I appreciate you (laughs) good very good well I thank you for those who've listened and who have viewed the other episodes with my friend Peter and Jason and now getting a womanly perspective from a different societal standard. I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for next week.